Good evening. Thank you for joining us for Creme 2 News 10 at 10, where we give you more news in less time. I'm Nicole Hernandez. Let's get started. We begin tonight with an update to earlier breaking news. Just moments ago, we learned the man stabbed in Spokane Valley earlier today has died. It happened around four this afternoon on East Boone Avenue. Spokane police are still searching for the suspect. Take a look. Spokane Valley police released this photo. They think this is the man that they're looking for. They say he is a white male with dark curly hair wearing black pants and a gray hoodie. We spoke with the witness who called 911. They asked to stay anonymous for their safety, but said they saw the fight that escalated into a stabbing breakout on the street outside their house. And my wife said that she saw a lot of blood. So then that's when we went inside and called 911. Um, and then we went to go check while I was on the phone with 911. And we saw the guy that we originally saw walking, laying in the bushes, lifeless. Police are asking anyone with information on this incident to call 911. And just hours ago, WashDOT called on Spokane Police Chief Craig Meidel to walk back the chronic nuisance notice, nuisance notice he put on the homeless encampment near I-90. WashDOT called the notice, quote, unlawful. After receiving the letter, I spent the afternoon reading through it and breaking it down. WashDOT says the city is blaming them for what's going on at the encampment. In this response, they are not taking responsibility for how the camp has grown. They go as far as blaming the city for making the problem worse. The letter says, quote, your failure to work effectively with the state when Camp Hope was first established and contained less than 100 residents led to its growth and the conditions that you complain of now. WashDOT says they are concerned with how many shelter beds the city says are available. They say they're under the impression some of the beds the city claims are open Open, actually are not. But I asked the city about the number of beds open. They said the Trent shelter is running on a more flexible staffing approach than previous shelters. What we've done is we've contracted for a minimum of 150 to a minimum of 250. Those are staffing levels. So right now we're at a staffing level of a minimum of 150, but it's an intentionally a flexible space. WashDOT continues the letter by breaking down six objections to Chief Meidel's notice. They say, quote, because the city both caused and contributed to the conditions at Camp Hope through its own actions and inactions, it attempts to shift blame to the state must fail. Chief Craig Meidel issued the chronic nuisance order for the camp on October 5th. In today's letter, WashDOT says just one day before that, the city said they were planning on bringing resources to the campers. The initial letter from Chief Meidel also threatened fining the state if they don't take action to remove the camp. But WashDOT says the city actually cannot find the state because they have sovereign immunity. Despite these claims, the city says they have been meeting with the state and talking through the situation consistently. And so we're still having a conversation. We met as recently as yesterday and we plan to meet again next week. So that's the good news is we're still talking and there's um, been a lot of good dialogue back and forth. So what's next? With this letter, WashDOT is asking the city to withdraw the chronic nuisance order and say they will consider legal action if the city does not remove it. And the city told me they are planning on continuing the process of the chronic nuisance notice. They say the notice is the formal and necessary process to move forward with making a plan. And now to our night beat with a quick look at the day's top stories. The City of Spokane Parking Services started Phase 2 of their parking meter replacement. Phase 1 replaced parking meters from Monroe to Washington earlier this year. Now the city is installing new parking meters east of Washington to Division. The new meters give people three ways to pay. Coins, credit or debit cards, and through a mobile app. The new app, Park Mobile, is replacing the old Passport app. And as of just hours ago, Spokane County is no longer under a burn ban. After a summer of wildfires, the Spokane County Fire Marshal finally lifted the ban. That means people in Spokane County and the Spokane metro area are no longer under burn restrictions. The Fire Marshal put the ban in place in July on 22nd and when the fire season was at its peak. And now you can enjoy though again, once again, those campfires, fire bowls and fire pits. And a judge sentenced a former Hayden teacher to life in prison for sexually abusing two children. Ronald Stone was convicted in June of two counts of lewd conduct with a minor under the age of 16. Our news partners at the Coeur d'Alene Press report the children were between the ages of 3 and 15 when Stone abused them. Police say the abuse is not connected to Stone's former job as a fifth grade teacher at Hayden Meadows Elementary School. That was your night beat. To learn more about any of those stories, just text the word night to 509-448-2000 and we'll send them right to your phone. And we're going to take a little break from the headlines to talk 
weather now. So it's looking like cooler temperatures may finally be on the horizon. We're still nice and warm though. So we have our meteorologist, Michelle Boss in studio. Michelle, can you let us know when we're actually going to start feeling those fall temperatures? Yeah, on the horizon, on the, the far horizon towards the end of the month. If you're looking for something different in the immediate future, it's not there. It's more of the same, uh, at least for the next week, but it's good weather, so I'm not going to complain. 55 out there right now, 40s in Deer Park and Sandpoint, and still some 60s in Omac, Grand Coulee, uh, but actually also in the 60s right now. Uh, have a few clouds moving through. That's about all the excitement there's going to be in our weather. We're looking at clear skies tonight. Lows will be dropping down to the low to mid 40s. We will be right back up in the 70s for the entire weekend with plenty of sunshine. Tonight, our Crime 2 investigators obtained a letter that a former top housing official sent to Spokane Mayor Nadine Woodward. He sent the letter the day he left his job. In it, he suggests the administration is leaving millions of dollars for housing unspent. Crime 2's Amanda Rowley combed through the document and asked the city to explain why those funds have not been spent. Well, Spokane's former director of Neighborhood Housing and Human Services, John Hall, resigned in September and on his final day, he sent this 27 page letter to the mayor and city administrator. Hall asserts that the city's administration is failing to distribute millions of dollars meant for housing in the community. Spokane's former housing official John Hall says the city is sitting on a huge pot of money that it's at risk of losing. In his letter, Hall describes a combination of limited staffing and inexperience as the reasons for the delays in distributing several million dollars for housing in the community. In August, City Council approved $10 million in federal affordable housing funding for 11 projects. This would create 220 units of housing. But Hall wrote, work on these projects haven't even started. He says what's even more disappointing is the city has built up $5.4 million from another housing program, and it's all gone unspent over the last three years. On top of that, the city has yet to submit a plan to the U.S. Department of Housing Urban Development on how it will spend $6 million. City spokesperson Brian Coddington attributes the delay in spending to limited staffing in the housing department and competing priorities. There are competing priorities and, and there's only so much staff time to go around and they are, are moving as quickly as possible. But again, they want to make sure that they're doing the best work that they can do because these are heavily regulated uh, funding sources that require auditing um, at both at the state and federal level. Hall says the city could lose some of its funding for housing if it doesn't act. But Coddington told me the city has no intention of missing those deadlines. Now, Hall's letter also lists recommendations to improve the offices within the housing department, including My311 and Neighborhood Services. Coddington told me the city is always looking for ways to improve. Amanda Rowley, Crime 2 News. In national news tonight, former President Donald Trump responded to the January 6th committee that unanimously voted to issue him a subpoena. He did so with a 14 page letter. In the letter, he does not agree to testify or answer any questions, but instead he reiterates false claims of election fraud, calls the panel's members, quote, hacks and thugs, and references in words and photos the size of the crowd he drew on January 6th. In the meantime, there's been question as to why the committee waited so long to vote for a subpoena. According According to CBS News, the panel was ready to issue the subpoena two weeks ago, but they rescheduled the original hearing during Hurricane Ian. Still to come tonight in national news, Alaska's Department of Fish and Game has canceled the winter snow crab season. That's because of a major decrease in the crab population. Coming up in about 15 minutes, we're bringing you an in-depth look into the cancellation that has the potential to seriously affect the economy. 25 are dead and dozens more are still trapped after an explosion in a Turkish coal mine tonight. The explosion caused the coal mine to collapse. Rescue efforts are underway as we speak. At the time of the explosion, there were more than 100 people inside the mine. Most were able to evacuate, but 49 people are trapped in a high-risk area of the facility more than 1,000 feet underground. Rescuers are continuing to work through the night trying to bring those still trapped to the surface. And that was Creme 2 News 10 at 10, where we give you more news in less time. Don't go to bed yet, though. A huge merger in the grocery industry means we could be seeing prices on the rise soon. 
Plus, a new Idaho campaign is helping undocumented immigrants get one piece of vital identification. We're back in just 90 seconds.